Okay, good evening. I'm going to call our meeting to order at 6 p.m. Tuesday, September 10th, 2024. May I have Commissioner Mobley um, lead the flag salute? Yes. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Individual with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Commissioner Bennett? Here. Commissioner Burke? Here. Commissioner Doris? Here. Commissioner Mobley? Here. Commissioner Nichols? Here. Chair Halley? Here. Okay. May I do I have a motion to for approval of minutes from July twenty third, twenty twenty four? All those in favor? Aye. No opposed. Okay, now I'm going to uh, open oral comments from the public. Uh, no comments from the public, so I will close public comment. So our business on the agenda, um, a design review of a new 48 by 96 electronical, electronic digital message board to be installed on an exist, existing sign pole located at 2020 Main Street. Evening is the design review of a new electronic digital message board. The resolution before you is a recommendation. Oh, that is not the right one. Okay, you heard it here. Um, let me regroup here for a moment. The resolution before you is a resolution to of the Planning Commission of the City of Fortuna granting design review approval for a new 48 inch by 96 inch electronic digital message board to be installed on an existing sign pole located at 2020 Main Street. Can you guys hear me now? Mm. Okay. Um, as you see on the screen, this is the existing building um, with the existing sign. It has a large sign uh, on the top that is advertising one of the existing businesses within the structure, within the addition to the structure. And then below that, there is another sign. Um, the existing sign is currently lighted on the top and the lower sign is not lit. Our Fortuna Municipal Code section 17.03.022 Subsection G and 7 require design review for modica modifications of commercial structures in the commercial thoroughfare zone. And section 17.05.180 of the Fortuna Municipal Code provides that no sign shall be painted or erected in the city, nor shall a sign be modified in structure unless a sign permit has been issued by the city and no permit shall be issued unless the sign conforms to the regulations of this section and has received review and approval. Additionally, a sign permit is not required for non-structural modification of face, copy, color, or normal maintenance of any existing sign. And flashing illumination, signs shall not flash, revolve, move, or be animated in any way. Uh, the design review guidelines do allow exceptions for certain activities that are considered minor alterations. These activities include repainting where the color of the paint substantially complies with the approved paint color palettes, permanent sign replacement where a sign is similar in design to the entitled permanent sign, and installation of new landscaping areas. 
So in conformance with the design review guidelines, design review of this project is limited to the digital message board and its potential for movement and animation. And here you can see the proposed signs um, from the east view and the west view. Um, the project is replacement of an existing non-illuminated sign with a 32 square foot illuminated digital message board. Uh, we've added a condition of approval number five that requires text images shall not change or refresh more than once per hour to render the text virtually stationary. And the upper signs are similar in design. They're fixed and lighted and size approximately 86 square feet. Oh, I don't think that's quite right. Um, to the existing sign and as such are not subject to design review. And there's some additional project information. Uh, the paint color for the sign structure is from the approved paint palette. It is the color cinder. And they will also be doing a landscaping refresh. There will not be any new landscaping areas, but they did um, submit a landscaping plan showing that they will be refreshing the barks and um, weed mats and things. and um, freshening up those landscaped areas. They will also be, they're planning on painting the building as well. Um, I don't have those colors yet, but they are planning on staying within the approved color palette for that building. So that will also um, be exempt from design review. Our environmental review determined that the project is exempt from CEQA as a minor alteration of an existing facility. And we come to the Planning Commission action. You'll receive the staff presentation and review commission questions. Uh, the Planning Commission Chair will open public comment. The Planning Commission Chair will close public comment with a voice vote for that public comment section. And we will entertain a motion to adopt resolution P-2024-3116 and read by title only. And that's it for the presentation. I'm ready for questions or public comment. I had a question. Do we, we send this out to everybody on that road? Yes. Looking at the, the pictures and pulling up Google Earth, Google Maps, looking at the going uh, westbound. The housing behind that sign, all those people are notified that, about this, and yes. all these signs are going to be lighting up their windows. Uh, well, the light, they, the sign itself is facing um, a southerly direction. It's on the south end of the parcel, so it will be facing Rays and that shopping center, not any of the residential areas. Um, let's see if I can get the, the other side. Yeah. It will be a low level, um, within the code, a low level LED lighted sign. The current sign that is existing is lighted. The top. The I was thinking more of the flashing sign, but the housing behind it, the two story and the one story and everything else around it that looking at. Well, it won't be allowed to flash. That is one of our conditions of approval, is that it will be static. It will only be allowed to change once per hour. Is this light, lit, lighted sign going to be on 24 hours a day or just in the day working hours? Uh, we do have certain um, hourly requirements that uh, parking lot signs should generally not be lit during non-business hours um, other than for security purposes. Okay. So they have agreed to that? They will, yes. That's written into the sign code. Any other questions, comments, concerns from commissioners? I just want to say I'm very thrilled the building is going to get a little love because I walk by and it looks a little <laughs> bit in need. So that's exciting because it's a beautiful building. And I don't have anything else to say. I just have one quick question. It, it said that 
the light isn't going to go beyond that parcel. How do you, how do we know that? Is there, has there been a, a study of how much light this is going to project or? Uh, generally we rely on the specifications from the sign installer themselves and then with, you know, site, site view, um, afterwards. Actually, I wish Michael Kine was here because, um, I don't, Joshua may, may remember, um, we did it. We've, we've had issues with, uh, businesses when they do lighting refreshes and with some light spillage onto neighboring properties. And we work with those businesses to be sure that they're, um, doing what they can to avoid that. So when we notice that, or when neighbors have issues with that, then we address that, um, at that time to be sure that the lights stay on the business property. So the, there's some sort of photometric plan that gets submitted when they do the Yes, so okay. with this sign, he will be submitting, uh, the sign installer will be submitting for a, a building permit, and so as part of the building permit process, we'll have a greater view mm -hmm. of the um, specifications of the sign. Because visual light is different than projected light. Yes. We don't have any uh, restrictions on site. We have restrictions on light spillage and um, that sort of thing, but we don't have restrictions on site of light within the... Yeah, yeah, for sure. If we... Yes, and that's why, that's why signs like these come to the Planning Commission because there isn't really... Um, sufficient uh, parameters to address them with the code themselves. Normally something like this would be something that would be ministerial and with a, a building permit generally signs are, but these sort of outliers that don't quite fit within the sign code or the design review code or the design review guidelines, um, that's why we bring them to the Planning Commission for that extra layer of review. One more question. Sure. Is there a process by which the citizens Residents that live local to the sign would be able to object to it after it was put up. Yes. 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 That's like I said. I wish that Vice Chair Kine was here because he, prior to being on the Planning Commission, was a citizen that was affected by um, lighting, and Gary worked extensively with the business. I'm glad Gary is here mm -hmm. to address. My obligation is to look after the citizen. Yes. Yes, that is something that we, we have addressed and, and would address if this became an issue. Most backlit signs, <coughs> excuse me, most backlit signs, when, they, when they're building signs, they're not looking for volume of light to come out like you're trying to light a piece of property up. The problem gets to when you're lighting property for, for movement is one thing or security is another. You don't necessarily want to do that with a sign for the reason is, is the sign's so bright you can't even look at it. It's, it's, it picks up. So the, there's a, these guys are working off of, I don't know exactly what you, how you want to say it. Uh, a certain amount of brightness. You get too bright on the signs. You, it's, just, it's, it's just not pleasant. It's not aesthetically pleasing. It's not anything. And you don't look at it more like, it's not like a casino sign where they got those big digital things they're trying to, they're, now they're trying to grab your attention, you can hardly see it, but that isn't what this is. Well, it brings to mind that Seinfeld episode with the Kenny Rogers roasters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that exactly is why they don't kind of do this sort of thing. But uh, yeah, when they're building signs and selling it, they don't want to do that. They don't want to put it in. Another thing is it, it's, it costs a lot more money to do that also. If you're going to actually light up your park, park a lot, uh, let's do it with something else. Yeah. Is yes. Um, we'll open public comment. <laughs> All right. I will close public comment. So number two on the business agenda is. Sorry. I'm need, sorry. It's okay. You're right. <laughs> Somebody motion. Sorry. Motion to adopt resolution P twenty twenty four dash. Three one one six and read by Powell. Sorry. Second. second 
on for a while. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Roll call, please. Roll call vote. Resolution P-2024-3116, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Fortuna granting design review for approval for a new 48-inch by 96-inch electronic digital message board to be installed on an existing sign pole located at 2020 Main Street. Commissioner Bennett. I vote in favor. Commissioner Burke. In favor. Commissioner Doris. Yes. Commissioner Mobley. Yes. Commissioner Nichols. Yes. Chair Halley. Yes. Thank you, commissioners. And I did want to mention, too, um, if there is interest from the commission, we can hold um, special workshops to review our design review guidelines. It's always a good idea to, you know, take a look at the last time that we had workshops for that was in 2017. So technology has changed. We have, you know, a lot of things. We have new types of signs, um, you know, various, various aesthetic things that are, you know, brand, brand new. Um, <laughs> so if that's something you guys are interested in, um, let me know and we can put that together and we can, you know, do a, a, a review of the guidelines and see if there's anything that, you know, we want to update or add um, to those. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Okay. Item number two on the business agenda is a public hearing to consider the adoption of a resolution recommending city council approval of a general plan amendment and rezone for approximately 1.1 acres of accessors parcel number 202-103-010 and finding the project exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. I did want to mention that this project is very similar to the uh, rezone and general plan amendment that you folks heard at the previous planning commission meeting. Unfortunately, this application was submitted after we had noticed the original, uh, the original project. Um, they will both be heard together if this one is approved this evening. They will both be heard together at the city council meeting, but there was the timing wasn't right to be able to bring them both to you, um, both to the planning commission at the same time. But they, coincidentally, they both happen to be in the very same. They're both presented by the same ownership. They are not the same ownership. It's yeah, coincidentally, it's the very same section of yeah. of Ronerville Road, the north section and the south section. Um, it just yeah, it just worked out that way. Okay, what you have before you, the resolution. Before you is a recommendation for city council approval of a general plan amendment changing the land use designation from residential very low to commercial and the rezoning from residential single family to commercial thoroughfare of a 1.1 acres of parcel number 202-103-010 and finding the project exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. The parcel is a 1.72 acre parcel. It's located east of Ronerville Road and north of Gullickson Drive, or no, sorry, north of uh, Huffman Way. The parcel is developed with an existing single family residence with a single car garage and a 5,662 square foot commercial shop constructed in 1986. Um, here is a street view of the existing single-family residence and and the shop um, with the driveway. You can see that it's a very, very large shop um, and a neat little single-family home. This is another view. This is the view looking south. Um, the shop is currently screened with uh, solid chain link as well slatted chain link fencing which um, would have been required had this shop been constructed um, if it had been zoned as commercial thoroughfare when the shop was constructed and you can see that there's quite a bit of land behind the shop that extends into the commercial thoroughfare zone 
our California Government Code Section 65358 <laughs> does allow for amendments to any of the state mandated general plan elements up to four times per year. And this proposed amendment will be combined with the previous rezone project as the first general plan amendment to go to City Council in 2024. Uh, the general plan amendment will change the land use designation of the northern 1.1 acre area from residential very low to commercial. The land use density will not increase by a significant amount as the existing um, residential very low floor area ratio is 0 0.30 and the commercial floor area ratio is 0 0.35, uh, which means that... Um, and the square footage of development cannot exceed 35% of the parcel. And we've got our maps here, the existing general plan um, showing that the parcel is zoned for uh, residential very low and what the underlying land use designation will be post general plan amendment. The Fortuna Municipal Code section 17.07.200 uh, covering zoning amendments establishes procedures for Title 17, which is our zoning regulations to be amended, supplemented, changed, modified, or repealed, including but not limited to amendment of the zoning text, changing any property from one zone to another, imposing any regulation not theretofore imposed or modifying any such regulation theretofore imposed. And this proposed zoning amendment is consistent with section 17.07.200 and does not prohibit split zoning of larger transitional parcels. Um, the proposed zoning amendment will rezone the northerly portion of the parcel from residential single family to commercial thoroughfare, expanding the existing commercial thoroughfare zone by 235 linear feet and the total area to be rezoned is 1.1 acres. And again, we have our maps here showing the proposed and existing zoning, um, extending that commercial thoroughfare zoning farther south. Um, the future development, the neighboring residential uses are protected from additional development by the streamside management area of 50 feet, buffering Jamison Creek to the east. You can see here this tree line, um, and this line here is Jamison Creek, and it does have a buffer. So those residential areas to the east behind this shop and the existing single family residents would be protected from any future development that would not be allowed. It's not a buildable area to the east. Um, if there were any expansion of the uses which are not planned at this time, but if the um, applicant did plan to expand the commercial uses, they would be required to go through the development review process. Um, and that would give us an extra layer of protection, um, allowing any additional commercial uses in that zone. Um, they would not be allowed to expand those uses beyond the square footage of that zoned section of the parcel. Excuse me. <coughs> and the southern 0.6 acre portion of the parcel where the existing residence is located will retain the existing residential single family zoning. The environmental review, the project is exempt from CEQA as a general rule exemption as there will be no changes to the environment due to the change in zoning. Planning Commission action to receive the staff presentation and review any commission questions with staff. Planning Commission chair to open public comment and close public comment with a voice vote and we will seek a motion to adopt resolution P-2024-3117, read by title only. Questions from commissioners? Yes. So this is going to remain one parcel? Yes. Parcel. Is, it, is that unusual for a single parcel? No, not in Fortuna. It is not. <laughs> 
We, we um, I think a, a reason that it happens often here in Fortuna is that we have um, one of the largest per capita levels of undeveloped land and parcels that are larger than the minimum allowed for zoning. So this parcel um, is quite large for the zoning and for the area. Um, we have other sections of the city that are the same where, you know, the, the minimum lot size might be 6,000 square feet, but we've got a 20,000 square foot lot. So one portion of that lot will be in an area that's zoned one way and then another portion. This doesn't preclude the owner from sectioning out the car. Lot they could lot. they they do have a, yeah they do have enough land that they could subdivide um, yeah uh, subdivisions are much more expensive than than changing the zoning any other questions yes I'd like to open public comment okay Going to close public comment. Voice vote. Pardon me. Oh, a, a motion, please. <laughs> Do I have a motion? Motion adopt resolution P 2024-3117 and read by talent only. Roll call vote. Second that. Resolution P-2024-3117, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Fortuna recommending City Council approval of a general plan amendment changing the land use designation from residential very low to commercial and the rezoning from residential single family to commercial thoroughfare of 1.1 acres of assessor's parcel number 202-103-101 and finding the project exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. Commissioner Bennett. Commissioner Burke? Yes. Commissioner Doris? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Chair Halley? Yes. Uh, next up on the agenda, we do have Planning Commission staff communication, and I have some exciting news for you folks. Um, Sherry, our director is not here this evening because she is um, up in Eureka at the county presentation of the climate action plan. Um, so we will be bringing that to the planning commission, um, I believe early next month, but then our next planning commission meeting, which I believe is on the 20, 24th, um, we will be bringing a mill district specific plan presentation to the planning commission. So you folks will get to see an update. I know that we did have that um, earlier this year, but we are um, in the final stages of adopting the specific plan and the PEIR is currently circulating. Um, the public draft of that is circulating. So we're hoping by the end of the year we can have everything adopted um, and be moving forward with development in that area. So that's pretty exciting news. So leave your calendars open for the next meeting. It's exciting news in, in city government world. <laughs> that's exciting. And next Tuesday we have a... The next meeting, the last meeting for September, we will, we will have that on the agenda, yes. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, not from this end. Do you guys have any questions or any, any news? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second motion. <laughs> hey, oh my God, I need it.